guys, welcome to the session. I am your quantitative ability tutor, Kasturi Sadam. Guys, today we are going to learn about uh, profit and loss, and we are going to solve some easy problems related with profit and loss. So this is a revision session, and we both are going to solve problems together. In this revision session, I am not going to give you a timer. So let us solve the problems together and solve it as fast as possible. Let's see how many problems you can solve correctly and before me. So the first problem is a shopkeeper sells rice at 10% profit and uses weight 30% less than the actual measure. His gain percentage is what? Guys, always remember one thing. Whenever you are solving profit and loss problem, come what may, always assume the cost price to be 100 rupees. Why is it so? Why should we assume the cost price to be 100? We should assume the cost price to be 100 because the profit is given in percentage and whenever it is given in percentage, it is always percentage of the cost price. So the profit or the loss is always percent of the cost price. So always assume the cost price to be 100 so that it becomes easier for you to do the calculations. Now, the shopkeeper, let us assume that the actual weight is X. So, he is selling 30% less, which is he is selling 0.7X. And he is claiming that this 0.7X is actually X amount, X grams. Now, let us assume that the cost price per gram is 100 rupees. So, what is going to be cost price of 0.7x grams that is going to be 70 rupees 70x so the cost price of 0.7x grams is 70x now this is the price that is incurred this is the cost that is incurred by the shopkeeper now he is making 10% profit also and he is selling 30% less also so actually he is the selling price is going to be 10% more which is going to be 110 correct it's going to be 110 and he is sell, he is going to claim that price on this x gram because he's claiming this 0.7 to be x but actually he's just paying for the 0.7 x but he is selling x so here we have 110 x as the selling price now we have to find out his actual profit. So the actual profit, actual profit is nothing but my selling price minus my cost price upon my cost price, which is nothing but 40 upon 70, which comes out somewhere close to 50. Seven percent. So the right answer is fifty-seven percent. His actual gain is fifty is around fifty-seven percent. This one was an easy one. Let's see the next one. Four percent selling price of an article is equal to five percent of its cost price. Again, twenty percent of the selling price is rupees one twenty more than twenty-two percent of its cost price. The ratio of cost price to selling price is what? So guys, here we have to find out the ratio of my cost price to selling price. And I am going to, I am extending this question and ex uh, find out the cost price as well as selling price, individual values as well. So this is an extension that I am making for this particular question. So let's solve the first problem. First, let us find the first half, which is the ratio of cost price to selling price. Now it is given... 4% of my selling price is equal to 5% of my cost price. So here my 100, 100 gets cancelled and I get my cost price to selling price ratio here itself which is nothing but 4 upon 5. So I have already solved the first part of the question without even looking at this thing. Again 20% of the selling price is second part of the question. So my answer I am getting just using this particular 
first statement. But here, since I am extending the question to find out the value of cost price and selling price also, I think you might require this next information. 20% of the selling price is Rs. 120 more than 22% of its cost price. So here I have 20% of the selling price is Rs. 120 more than 22% of my cost price. So when I solve it, I know 5 CP is equal to 4 SP. So here I get 25 CP, 25 of 100 by the way, is equal to 120 plus 22 upon 100 CP. Correct? So I get 3 upon 100 CP is equal to 120. So this comes out as 40. So the value of my cost price comes out as 4000 rupees. Correct? And my selling price is 1.25 times my cost price which comes out as 5000 rupees. So when I cross check 20% of my selling price, so 20% is going to be 1000, 20% of my SP is 1000 and 22% of my cost price is going to come as 880. So 20% of my selling price is rupees 120 more than 22% of my cost price. Yes, this is very true. I have confirmed that the selling price is rupees 5000 and the cost price is rupees 4000. So guys here we were just asked about the ratio of this cost price to selling price but if we were further asked to find out the value also it is pretty simple. Let's go to the next problem. A man bought a horse and a camel. He sold the horse at 20% profit and the camel at 10% loss. In this way he made neither profit nor loss. So let us assume that the cost price of horse is H and the cost price of camel is C. So now this guy has sold the horse at 20% profit which means he has sold it for 1.2 H and the camel he sold at 10% loss which means he has sold the camel at 0.9 C and by this he has not made any profit or loss which means that the sum should be equal to his cost price which is H plus C. So what do I get here? I get 0.2 H minus 0.1 C equal to 0 which means I get 2 H is equal to 1 C. I have got the ratio between the cost price of horse and cost price of camel. So the cost price of camel is twice that of horse. Had he sold the horse at 5% loss and the camel at 5% profit, he would have earned 600 rupees profit. Okay, so here we are given that the horse needed to be sold at a loss of 5%, which means he is selling the horse at 0.95H and the camel he is selling at a profit of 5%. So which means he is selling the camel at 1.05 C and by doing this he is going to get 600 more than his cost price. So here I get 0 0.05 camel minus 0 0.05 of my cost is equal to rupees 600. So I've got this that the difference between the price of camel and horse is 12,000. 12, but I already have one camel is equal to 2H. So when I substitute it here, I get the cost price of horse as 12,000 which means the cost price of my camel is 24,000. 
So this was pretty easy. You have to find out the price of horse and cabbage. So the correct answer is 12,000 and 24,000. Now let's go to the next problem. A shopkeeper has 11 books of the same cost price. Okay. He sells the first book at certain price. Then he sells the second book at a price which is rupees 1 less than the first and the third at 1 less than the selling price of the second and he is following the pattern for 11 books. If he sells the sixth book at the cost price, what is the percentage profit on the transaction? So, there are 11 books. I am going to actually write down at what rate is he selling the 11 books. So the sixth book, let us assume that the cost price of all the 11 books is X. So my total cost price is going to be what? Total cost price is going to be 11X, correct? Because each each book is costing him X and he has 11 such books. Now he is selling the sixth book at X. So he is definitely going to sell the seventh book at X plus 1, correct? Because he is selling every book at 1 rupee less. So every increase in order book he has to set at 1 rupee more. So he is selling the 8th book at x plus 2. Similarly so on and so forth I get he is selling the 11th book at x plus 5. Similarly the 5th book he is going to sell at x minus 1. The 4th book he is going to sell at x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4. And the first one he sells at x minus 5. So when you calculate the total selling price of all these books, you again get 11x. This plus and minus gets cancelled every time and you end up getting 11x. So what is the percentage profit on the transaction? His cost price is equal to his selling price. So the total profit or no loss. There is no profit, no loss for this transaction. Let's see the next problem. The printing cost of a book depends on two factors. One is the fixed cost and the other is the variable cost which depends on the number of books printed. Publisher wants to earn 20% profit and according to his assumption, 500 copies of a book of marked price 2 will be sold in 3 months and 1000 will be sold in 9 months. Find the profit if he prints 4830 copies and that will be sold in 50 months. So as his publisher, he wants to earn 20% profit and he has marked the price at rupees 2. So let us assume that his cost price is X. Now 1.2 of his cost price is going to be 2 rupees, correct? So the value of my X comes out as 2 upon 1.2 which is nothing but 20 upon 12 which is 5 upon 3. So the cost price is 5 upon 3. Now he is selling 4830 copies. So 4830 into 2 comes out as 9660. So this is nothing but my selling price. But what is my cost price? So my cost price is nothing but 5 upon 3 into 4830 which comes out as 5 into 1. Eight zero five zero. So my total profit is nothing but my selling price which is 9660 minus 8050 and that comes out to be 1610 rupees. So my total profit is going to be 1610 rupees and you can cross check it this is going to be 20% of age 8050. Now let us see the next problem. Actually in this problem a lot of redundant information was given. I don't know why they have given the printing cost. It is depending on two factors and all this. So that need not be confused. Student need not confuse that with the approach. The approach is really simple. Alright, let's see the next problem. James and Webber are gamblers. 
Last year, the ratio between money lost by chains to weather was 4 is to 5. One thing to highlight here is this term last year, this word last year. The ratio of their individual losses of last year and present year is 3 is to 5 and 2 is to 3 respectively. If the total loss incurred by both of them is rupees 3,57,000, the present loss of James is what? So guys, here we are given last year's ratio of James and Weber's loss. So this is something which was last year. Now let us assume that last year James loss was 4x. Then Weber's loss automatically becomes 5x. So this was about the last year. But we are given the total loss incurred presently. We are also given one very important information that the ratio of their individual losses last year and present year is for James it is 3 is to 5. So what is his present year loss? If at all is last year to present year's ratio is 3 is to 5, which means his present year is going to be 5 upon 3 times his last year. Correct? Similarly, it goes for Webhub that Webhub's present year is going to be 3 upon 2 times his last year. So, the present for Webhub is 3 2, 3 upon 2 times the last year and the present loss for James is going to be 5 upon 3 of the loss last year. But what was his loss, loss last year? It was 4x. So, Webhub's present, James' present loss is nothing but 4x into 5 upon 3. Similarly, Webhub's present year loss is nothing but 5x into 3 by 2. So, when you cross multiply, you get Eight is to nine. So the ratio of James and Webhub's present year loss is eight is to nine. When we already know that the present year loss is three lakh fifty seven thousand for both of them together, then we have to find out James' share. So James' share is going to be eight into three five seven zero 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 upon eight plus. 9 is 17 and when I make this calculation, I get the answer as 1,68,000. So, the correct answer here is 1,68,000 which is the loss incurred by present loss which is incurred by J. So, guys, this was the last problem of Profit and Loss series, revision series. I hope you all have solved the problems correctly. If at all you have any doubt, please reach out to me. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much.